What's up, everybody? Back again. It's your boy BQ checking in with another uh, talking TNA podcast here. I want to do a several of these with different people that I respect. I did one with TW not too long ago, and I got my man Nanzo on here today. Um, and I got to tell you, dude, when I heard you on a Brace for Impact podcast one time, you were reviewing a show with Mike, I believe. It was one of the yeah. pay per views or something, and I really enjoyed your uh, perspective on things. So I was like, you know what? I think I messaged you right after that. I was like, well, I, I got to get you on. This was several months ago, but I was like, man, I got to get you on. We gotta, we gotta talk and um, and all yeah. that good stuff. So I'm real happy that you are uh, here to do this. We've been trying to plan this for a little while. So uh, yeah, thanks for having me on, man. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm really glad to do this. We were we were chatting here before we hit the record button, and um, he lives like 15 minutes from where I was. <laughs> Where, where I was raised and everything, so it was very crazy, yeah. man. We had I had no clue that he was repping rep uh, Orange County like that. So that, that's wild shit. But um, first we'll I'm going to ask you, dude. Uh, you did a this is another brace for impact podcast you did after what was the last po- uh, it's the anniversary of the last pay per view, right? Uh. Bound, bound for glory. For glory. Okay, okay. Yeah, bound for glory. Yeah. So, so after bound for glory, you and Mike Gilbert were talking about the TNA name change, and you were both yeah. really, really against it because it was it was one of those things like uh, you ju- we just got the news minutes before that, and you guys start recording. So, what do you yeah. think now? Do you, are you still kind of like ah, uh, or as if you had nah, time to like, let it simmer and stuff? I'm going to be honest with you; they proved me wrong there, man. Yeah. They proved me wrong. Like the name TNA, you know, it it always has a negative connotation to it. So when they rebranded over to Impact back in 2018, you know, I thought we were just done with the TNA chapter for good. Yeah. So I guess after the pay-per-view, I had some expectations or like what kind of debuts we're going to have moving forward. But I wasn't actually expecting, you know, TNA to sort of make its comeback. Now, obviously, I wasn't a big fan of it because I felt like just that name alone had just had a lot of negative connotation to it. So I just felt like it just didn't make sense at the time. Mm -hmm. But I sort of misunderstood the impact it was going to have you know, on the wrestling universe, because after I got off that call with Mike, Jesus, man, it was, it was, bro, it was like an explosion, man. Yeah. Like just the, just the, uh, the hype it got. I don't think Impact really got that hype. The last time it got that kind of hype was when Kenny Omega did, um, made it, made his debut on Impact. That was like, that was yeah. the, that that was at the height of its hype that you know it received but everything everything besides that the tna name was not something that i really it, the, the hype behind it wasn't something i really expected it was just i i was wrong like i was way off on that my calculations were way off and you know i've always told people especially on the bfi chat that listen man if i'm open to tna proving me wrong i always want them to prove me wrong i'm always pessimistic about the company because time and time again when i try to be optimistic i always get burned so i always have to be pessimistic it's just how it is you know so, yeah i often tell people that the best when it comes to like my pessimism or the negativity yeah. if you will it's because the best predictor of the future is, is the past right so Right. There's been so many times where like, hey, we're, you know, we're, we're it, it's a new era. It's a it's a new name. It's a new brand. And they've like kind of let us down every time. Um, exactly. I mean, if you think about when they rebranded to Impact, I mean, what a fucking fart in church, because it was like they were just even the global force and all that. Like, they were they were trying, but they were just bringing in all these wrestlers. No one had ever heard of. Literally. And, there was no yeah. change in how the company was operating and the website was the same. And it was, it was just like, they're just changing the name. And I think when they said, Hey, we're doing, we're going back to TNA. I, th- I think right away we're thinking, Oh, it's just going to be the same exact show with a different same name. stuff. Right. Yeah. But I actually looking back at it, I, you know, as much as Scott has his moments where he just flat out pisses me off. 
I have to give credit where credit is due. You know, five years, this is five years in the making. And Jesus, man, when uh, the, the, the amount of effort it took them to really make to, to really make the company whole again and when those when that's when the rebrand actually happened just the the hype the positive the, the positivity that came out of it i don't think i've ever seen anything like that you know yeah. from impact in no. a long i mean the last i mean yeah omega yeah omega came into impact and there was that hype but it wasn't as positive as this one. I mean, the last positive hype we actually got from Impact was was Kurt Angle's debut back in two thousand and six at uh, um, was it after Bound for Glory, I believe. No, before Bound for Glory, taping yeah, the thing was before it or Bound, before Bound for Glory two thousand and six. Yeah. But from a positive outlook, this was actually good. You mm-hmm. know, this was actually good. However. The follow up, uh, the follow up, the 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 follow up has just been really poor, man. Like yeah. it's been really poor, and you know, I felt like it was just a lost opportunity, man. Um, because we got a lot of exposure from this rebrand, and I felt like this was just an opportunity for us to capitalize on this moment, and we just dropped the ball once again, like we always do when it comes to moments like this. I mean, the AEW Impact Partnership was one. I felt like we dropped the ball there. Um, You have a company on mainstream TV literally trying to work with you guys. Um, Now, I put a lot of that on AEW, but I felt like there was just there were moments where we could have taken advantage of of that relationship and you know in a lot of ways we just dropped the ball but this one we really dropped the ball big time on this one i, I think that AEW relationship they went into from a one from a um a point of weakness i guess i could yeah. say like they went in knowing they were the underdog but they yeah i think they went in with the attitude like whatever yes sir whatever you say whatever you, whatever you, know. you say right and they didn't have they didn't have soldiers ready for omega i mean I mean, look at the opponents we look at the opponent the opponents we have ready for Omega. We had Swan. Swan really, Swan is good, but Swan isn't presentable enough. He isn't big enough. Yeah. Um, we had Sammy. Sammy, man, I don't know. Sammy's just Sammy, man. I I think the only person that actually made sense out of everyone that got involved was Moose. Moose, yeah. Now the problem with Moose in that regard was Moose didn't have didn't come with a lot of momentum heading into that match with Omega. So even when that even when that match happened at against all odds, it's it just it just did not click. You know? Right. But you know, it's just it's one of those is it's one of these areas that impact kind of has to improve, or I should say TNA has to improve. It's taking advantage, of, it's just taking advantage of these moments, you know leading mm-hmm. into these scenarios because the rebrand was good the rebrand was good like it was positive there was a yeah. lot of hype but we didn't take advantage of that and that's right because we, we saw right now there was a lot of podcasters who, who normally don't even breathe the name impact uh mm-hmm. you know jim Cornette and uh, sala monster and all these dudes and they're doing actual you know segments about the rebrand where in the past yeah. when they rebranded whether it was to impact a global force i mean it was no one talked about it no one cared um and this yeah. this one just got a lot of a lot of coverage and people wanted to know what was next and mm-hmm. i mean would you agree though that in december they've done a lot better with some of these match you know they're starting to we're signing this guy re-signing this guy they're doing some match announcements like there's a difference. Well, they've made some. They, they, they've made some improve. They've made some improvements in the last couple of weeks with this match announcements. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, hard to kill, man. It's 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 not selling well. You know, the, the thing is, hard to kill is going to sell out. I don't know what Scott Scott and um, his uh, what's his name is it Luigi? What I, the 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 VP marketing at at Anthem. I, 
Uh, yeah, name. Lou Angeli. I don't remember his name exactly. Yeah, but I don't know what they're going to do. But, you know, they have the habit of just putting people in there at the last minute. So yeah. it, it is going to sell out. Yeah. If My they, main gripe is... Gotta... Uh, continue, I'm sorry. No, no. My, my main gripe with the whole thing is it should have sold out earlier. Yeah. Like, it should have been sold out earlier. You get what I mean? I, th I think they felt that the, the, the rebrand alone was going to do the trick. Because right. when they did the Impact 1000, you know, like, those tickets sold and people were excited about it. So, they're, I think mm -hmm. internally, and I could be wrong, but I think internally they said, hey, we... We just have to announce the show, announce they're going back to the TNA, and uh, they're not going to care so much about the matches. So th this is a weird com comparison, but, you know, Tony Khan, when he's like, hey, we're going to Wembley, like they were able to sell, you know, the whatever 80,000 tickets without announcing a match. Uh, so there's times where, you, you know, there's, there's a certain buzz mm -hmm. and a certain hype behind something where you, it will just sell those tickets, but... I think that just my gut tells me that they just felt that that was enough. And um, they said, hey, we'll ramp it up come J December, you know, but they definitely took November off and yeah, fans were really disappointed with it. Uh, you know, when you get yeah, it, that, was, you that the, was so. <laughs> yeah. And it's and you don't have to announce matches, but you got to be creative. And mm -hmm. how do we get people talking? And th th there's, you know, there's creative ways to do it without making it about yeah. matches and you know the, um they could have you know scott could have done a lot of press i think a lot of podcasts get on the big shows um, right, i think he did like right. one maybe two and they were you know channels people weren't, weren't super familiar with yeah. um but you know I, I talk about this a lot too like they they did the ipwf and they did the thanksgiving episode you're like you're wasting two weeks there Literally, you know, if you want to do one, knock yourself out. I didn't even think IPWF was that bad this year. Usually, I think it's awful. I didn't think it was that bad this year, but such a small p percentage of the fans actually like those episodes. So God, that's part of the episodes, problem, man. you know. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know why it's on TV. I don't know why it's an episode. It, I don't know why it takes place. <laughs> It takes out an episode of Impact. I just don't know why that happens. I think that's something that should be behind um, an Impact Plus or a YouTube Insider special or something. But that you, we can't substitute an episode of Impact just to have IPWF in there. It just doesn't make any sense to me. And I mean, I get it. I think it's good, you know, for for um, for morale backstage. I think it's a yeah. good concept. Just don't put it on TV, man. You know, just don't put it on TV. It makes no sense. So, I don't know. I'm just not a big fan. Of, I'm not. A, I'm not a big fan of IPWF. But at the same time, um, you know, I I felt like a lot of work could have been done after Bound for Glory. Um, yeah. I know. I know some folks in the BFI chat. They were suggesting. They kept reiterating to me that. Um, so, you know, Scott did announce this earlier that there were, you know, there wasn't going to be any tapings this fall that, you know, I don't know why we're all acting surprised. I mean, I get it, but it's, that doesn't excuse, that really should not excuse this mess from happening. Because if anyone had told me that TNA was going to get a rebrand and there was going to be no tapings, I would have told you guys, you guys better get your asses out there and do something about that, man. Because this is just lost opportunity. This is like lost opportunity, which we're losing opportunity because, you know, like I said, b both both sets of tapings could have been sold out if we did something about it um, yeah. earlier, earlier this quarter. But now we're just having to make a lot of adjustments right now to get people to get people um buying their tickets for hard to kill and snake eyes as well i mean have you seen the tickets for snake eyes yeah it's it's not looking good and um yeah i i personally have a general admission seat for it because i was just not positive i could make the show um yeah so, so let me just get a cheap ticket but i was actually shocked that the prices for snake eyes were the exact same as um for hard to kill and yeah. i just thought that was 
I, I just thought that was odd. Um, yeah. You know, you're asking people to travel out there. Um, stay, you know, the travel is relatively expensive in January compared to other months of the year, yeah. but you're still talking yeah. about hotels, which are, um, you know, uh, with a resort fee, you know, so like you might see online right now. You know, the hotel is a hundred and they throw out $60 resort fee on top of it. And you're, exactly. you know, you're, you're paying a lot to go there. And yeah. I feel like snake eyes, you should damn near be getting in for free, you know, and yeah. I don't mean for free, but you know, the general mission should be $10. Ringside should be yeah. $50. Like sitting here, oh, $150 ringside. Like, come on. That's but you know what's going to happen? Ringside. But you know what's going to happen, though? You know, TNA, um, Impact has a habit of doing this. If they don't sell out those tickets, they're going to give out those tickets for free. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. mean, it's happened in the past. So yeah. it's, uh, it's it's no surprise. There's no surprise there at all. Yeah, the people are going to, I mean, yeah, it's going to, like as you said, it's going to sell out. We say sell out, but in quotes. Yeah. They're gonna pat it. They're they're you know they're not gonna right. be two hundred people short, but right uh, because if you remember, Bound for Glory took like a year to sell out, so mm -hmm. that was hard to kill with no really with yeah. no build. If we're being honest, how is that gonna you know? That's why I say oh, they were oh. depending on the name. Mm. Unless they bring in Mercedes Monet, <laughs> who do you think? Unless they bring in Mercedes. Who do you is that who you think? Because I'm not going to give my thoughts on it right quick right now because I'm going to do a separate upload on it. But do you have any thoughts of who you think it is? Do you think it's Mercedes? Uh, I think it's Dolph, man. I think it's Dolph. Yeah. And I'm saying this. I'm saying this under the premise of I don't know any available free agent that's out there um, that would make any sense. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know any free agent out there that make that really makes any sense, and I just don't. Mercedes, Mercedes is. I don't. I don't see how Mercedes. Um, I don't see how that's going to be a good fit. Mercedes is Mercedes is larger than life. She's a character that's just larger than life. She's more WWE based, and actually AEW to and actually AEW to a certain degree. I just don't picture her with TNA. She's too larger than life for TNA. And with yeah. the way we are, with the way it's, my, my was cat, cat? Just, yeah, he just knocked all of our uh, he just knocked all of our uh, stockings off. <laughs> cat, uh, well, these cat, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> dress down. Kind of, um, I think she is too big for the company. Um, yeah, she's. Too I, I've always brought up like when I kept when I told people. CM Punk isn't signing here. Um, yeah, Will Osprey isn't because they're too big for the company, and I, I know people don't like hearing that, but the problem yeah, is you bring in, big. and that's why I always say they can't afford CM Punk. People say yes, they can, but to afford CM Punk, you have to afford competition for him as well. Yeah, um, and this is a company that people at the top make some decent pay. The people at the bottom don't at all. So it's it, it's, it's right. You know, you can't. Um, you can't elevate someone into a CM Punk feud who's uh, yeah. getting paid per paid per appearance, and I, I, I don't know. I, I just think this, you know, the structure of how they they pay people would have to change, um, and they they would just have to bring in more talent that could work with them. You know, people say, so, I mean, Will Osprey was one thing. They said, well, he could wrestle this person, this person. I'm like, yo, they fed him three people off the bat that three of their top stars i was like who the hell would he fight if he signed you know so exactly. that's why i, I just mean, want to see them do more with what they have instead of big game hunting all the time yeah like it's the thing is i always try to i always try to get folks to put some perspective into these kind of things you're bringing osprey you want to bring osprey into tna 
Osprey is going to look at TNA and look at AEW and it's going to be like, what the hell am I doing in TNA? Okay, yeah, besides fight, besides wrestling Josh Alexander, who, by the way, I just wrestled, who else is there to wrestle? Right. I mean, okay, yeah, I wrestled Eddie and I wrestled Bailey, but those aren't, I mean, let's face it, those aren't like big matches. I mean, the only big match I could think of was him and Josh. I mean, Bailey was a good match. Bailey was the best match, but yeah, I, you know, I shit on that when they announced it, but it was it was really good. Yeah, but it, it, no one is going to talk about it. No one's right. going to talk about it. The, the 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 Will Osprey match that everybody talks about in 2023 was the was the Osprey Omega match. That's mm-hmm. all they talk about. And when he go when he goes to AEW, there's just a lot of comp- there's, there's a lot of talents out there ready for ready for Osprey. Just they just have a they have an avalanche of talents out there. TNA just doesn't have that. TNA has good talents, but we just don't know how to build our talents to get to that level. Right. It's just right. what it is. Yeah. I mean, we've done a really good job with Josh, but okay, who else? Mm-hmm. There's there's really nobody else that's been as consistent as Josh in the promotion. Right. I mean, and you know, keep in mind Josh has had like what two losses this year? Yeah. Something like that, yeah. I bound, for, I bound for glory and against Osprey. Mm-hmm. But if you take a holistic look at the talents that we have at our at our disposal, a lot of them have been taking losses left, right, and center, man. I yeah. mean, Bailey hasn't been consistent. Moose has been taking a lot of losses. Yeah, he lost Same to Joe Hendry, Hendry after, you know, several months ago. He literally lost to, he, he, he literally lost to Joe Hendry for the digital media t- um, title, which by the way, I hate that title so much. But, you know, mm. that's another topic. But, you know, you get what I mean, right? Like, yeah. there really isn't a consistent performer in the company. And that's a culture that kind of needs to, I'm expecting to change handed into next year. Because you want to bring an Osprey, but Osprey is going to be like, okay, you know, I appreciate the I appreciate the gesture and all, but you guys want to bring me over here. The money is good, but who am I facing here? That would make any sense? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's why I would just love to see them, you, you know, um, guys like Ace Austin, Trey Miguel. Those are a couple of names yeah. that come up, come to mind. But I was like, man, they should have been main eventers by now. Mm-hmm. You know, and they're both kind of doing yeah. the same thing. They've been for a while doing the tag team thing. So they, they have some dudes you can get there, but it's just, they're just not. It's very... um yeah. stagnant at the top and obviously we want to see some star power in the division but yeah. again i just think big game hunting for for guys like that is going to put them in a bad situation i bring up the good brothers all the time i said you know they they were making so much more than anyone on the roster and they were such bigger stars right. you know even though i right. fucking hated their run they had no one yeah. to work with and it became who can we bring from the outside to wrestle them? We have got to bring the gorillas of destiny, the, you know, bullet club, this and this, like we had the, the, the freaking uh, Briscoes, you know, like they had to bring in people from the outside to, to work with these dudes. Um, right. And I, I, you know, I would just love to see, I would love to see them um, sign some of these guys from NXT that get released that we don't know who the hell they are. That's in the developmental yeah. system because they're getting the best training in the world. And, and now you have mm-hmm. something you can really mold in this, you know, and potentially, you know, build yeah. into someone like really special. But yeah. it just seems like they don't always want to take that opportunity on on an unknown, you know. I, I wasn't a big fan. I, I wasn't a big fan of the the. I wasn't a big fan of trying to bring in Punk. I just wasn't because it didn't make yeah. any sense to me. It's like driving a. It's like bringing Punk to TNA was like driving a Ferrari into a low income neighborhood. That's just what it is. Yeah, yeah, if we're just being honest, right? Yeah, that's just what it is. It makes no sense. Mm-hmm. And what do you think is going to happen when you drive a Ferrari into a low-income neighborhood? People are going to get pissed. Yeah, I mean, they're all going to smile, but sooner rather than later, they're all going to get pissed. Because guess yeah. what? When contract season comes up, everyone's going to be like, okay, I want to get this paid. I want to get paid X amount of dollars. Mm-hmm. Where are you going to get that kind of money from? Yeah. So hey, hey. it just... It didn't make any sense. And, I, you know, this is something I was trying to reiterate to people. Like, this signing just doesn't make any sense for where we are right now. Like, we got to get what we need to invest in is presentation. 
is production. That's where yeah. we need to put a lot of money in. Hell, we need to put a lot of money into creative, into creative folks back backstage as well. Because you know, when you look at TNA, when you look at Impact, there really isn't a lot of storylines going on. And you know, when you don't have storylines or feuds going on, then how are talents going to develop? Mm-hmm. I mean, we've seen some pay per views where there hasn't been a lot of classic feuds on there. I right. mean, BQ, take, let's take a step back. When was the last time TNA actually had a good um, had a good storyline going or a good feud going? Hell, let me even put it to you this way. When was the last time we had a good promo going on in TNA? <laughs> the, to me, the last good promo was um, Jay White. It's a particular Jay White one I'm thinking of, you know? <laughs> I remember uh, T- right, TAW and I were talking about it. I know his AW promos aren't very good, but mm-hmm. uh, T and I, uh, TW and I were talking about it when he showed up at uh, Impact and he did a promo in the ring and it was just so much, it had so much more charisma than anyone else on the roster. Now, granted, his work's in a smaller setting. Like when he talks on mm-hmm. AW, it's like, shut up, you know, but... Um, but compared to the the impact promos, like he was like light years ahead of these guys. Um, it wasn't even someone from the roster, but we were just, you know, TW and I were talking about like, man, this really stands out. Um, you know, cause the promos are usually cut by Josh Alexander. Same, same thing. You know, um, obviously Sammy same Callahan's gone off. every, every time he cut a promo, same thing. You know, Alex Shelley, same, you know, it's, it's a lot of the same material. Do you know the last promo? Do you know the last promo that I thought made sense that contributed so much to the storyline that they were trying to portray was the Reswan Kenny Omega match. And that came from Don Carlos. Yeah. That came from Don Carlos. I haven't seen anything since then that just made sense. I mean, Don Carlos pretty much cut a promo where he pretty much told Swan that, you know, you're a good talent, but you're just ineffective against Omega. It's like you're just wasting your time. Yeah. And then like they Omega proved that the, he won. And then they proved that, that Omega was the god of Omega is the god of pro wrestling. Yeah. I mean, that was the only pro- and you know, I remember being on I remember being on Twitter that day where, you know, people like fans from different aisles were like, This is a good promo. Like mm-hmm. You know, you could see the hype was there, but after that, I don't know any promo. I don't know any promo that made sense. That came I'll out give you a TNA good. Center. What I thought was a good one was Mickey James, uh, prior to the last rodeo. I thought she came out there and it was very. Um, I, I thought she conveyed good emotion. Um, mm. I didn't think the storyline was that good because she didn't actually. She said, "I'm going to wrestle everybody," but she didn't right. have. It could have almost been like their John Cena U.S. title, you know, thing right. where he he started working with everyone. She could have right. had a good match with Alicia, had a good match with Rosemary, good match right. with Havoc. She didn't write, wrestle any of these people. She wrestled three people, um, and then got a title shot. You know, so I didn't think that mm-hmm. the story was very good, but I, I thought the promo she cut prior to it um, was pretty good. But um, yeah. <sighs> The promo was, I mean, I'm, the promo was okay. I, I'm neither here or there with Mickey. I thought that, I thought the storyline was actually good to a degree because the knockouts division at that time with Mickey, Diana, Grace, and um, Masha, I thought having the four of them at the helm running the knockouts division was actually one of the best things that happened to te- that happened to impact within the last three years. And this was what this was last year. Year and I a half believe. ago. Yeah. Yeah. This was, no, this was bound year. for glory. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This was, no, this was from, this was actually from bound for glory 2021 leading up to hard to kill um, mm-hmm. 2023. That stretch because yeah. he had Grace, he had Jordan Grace, he had Diana, he had Mickey James, and he had Masha. Both of them were just beating the hell out of each other. 
yeah. within that stretch. So that was the knockouts division. I would say impact has a very impact does pretty good with the knockouts division when it comes when it comes to building talent. They yeah. do really well with the knockouts division because you had Diana. You had Diana who has just been an unstoppable monster within the past three years. Granted that the last six months has just been shit because we all know well, you know, what's going on with her contract. And they've done a pretty good job with Jordan Grace. And then oh, they yeah. did a good job with Mickey. Masha, I didn't like the undefeated streak they did with Masha. I felt like she could have done a little bit more leading up to her match with Grace. But her and Jordan had classic bangers, man. Mm. Like, they had classic bangers. Then You know, this is where I'm going to give TNA some prop. Like, they did a pretty good job with the four of the knockouts. And I feel like this is where I'm like, you know, I look at the... I look at the, the the state of the knockouts division. With Deanna leaving, someone has to fill the void. Someone has to fill the void for Deanna. And I think that's where I'm like, okay, maybe bringing in a Mercedes might actually make sense. Because having her having her come in to, you know, having her make the jump to TNA to replace Diana would be such a very good, would be mm -hmm. such a really good move. And Impact has a very good way of replacing stars. They, you know, I, uh, I give, I try to give them credit when it comes to replacing stars. Yeah. The problem is, I just don't know. I, I'm a bit skeptical. I just don't see how Mercedes fits into this. The, I mean, the ball is ripe for Mercedes to come in because Kyle went, went on Busted Open Radio, said that the biggest star in TNA history is going to debut at, 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 at Hard to Kill. So I'm expecting, okay, if that's the case, then it has to be Mercedes. But, man, I just don't know, man. I, I Scott, Scott, <laughs> Scott is going to drop the ball on this one, man. Right. I, I don't know how I feel about this one, you know. I've got a couple in mind, but like I said, this, is, this isn't the, the platform for it quite yet. I, I'll actually tell you when we get off offline here, okay. but uh, I, yeah. I've got a couple in mind that I don't think anyone is talking about. Um, right. Because I think, I think we're immediately say, hey, who just got released from WWE? But people begin re released for a little while now um, that haven't surfaced up anywhere, so... Um, yeah. But this is a lot of the reason I think that they're going to go into the TNA era with Jordan as a heel. Um, I, I've been really steadfast on this, that she is going to um, to mm. turn on Trinity because the Trinity storylines for the last half year, most of them have been, you know, hugging her opponents backstage or hugging them in a ring and shaking hands and everyone's, you know, yeah. um, I don't know what that yeah and i was just like and they're kind of doing that now a little bit i mean they're teasing a little bit jordan's like you know has a little edge to her but i just mm -hmm. did not see another match where they shake hands at the end and um i and i'm steadfast in saying that scott is not going to beat trinity clean for the title i just yeah. cannot see i don't see grace driver one two three and Tr trinity doesn't kick out i was like there's going to be something some kind of shenanigans um yeah but no, they, they, they do a pretty good job. You know, you, I thought where Masha, where they dropped the ball with her, I don't want to say they dropped the ball, but she lost that match versus Jordan for the title. And then they had her, they had a rematch like two weeks later, like at last knockout standing, and it was totally unnecessary. That's my problem. You see, that's <laughs> the problem with this. You see, that's the problem with the booking of this promotion, man. I you know, I don't think there's anything I hate more in rematch clauses. Granted, Masha's wasn't granted Masha wasn't a rematch clause, but I feel like for a match to be big, especially anywhere, especially in TNA, you can't have a big match and then two weeks later you have the same big match again. Right. It lost. I mean, it wouldn't make sense. Like the Moose versus Alexander match at Rebellion last year. I, I was it last year? Yeah, it was last year. Yeah, last year. I thought it was a good match. 
Mm-hmm. And it should have been done. But Impact had to follow up with another big match the following week or two weeks after. After building it for like... After, for I mean, glory. come on, man. Like, <laughs> because guess what? I would rather have that match one time and then a year or so down the line or maybe a couple months down the line, I'll revisit that match again. And then it becomes like a big deal. It becomes a big deal because everyone will be like, okay, Moose has to get his win back. But, you know, having a match one week and then two weeks later, you want to have a rematch with the same Mm -hmm. competitors. It it doesn't make any sense, man. That just doesn't work. I mean, it it really doesn't work. How do you make a talent big at that point? How do you make a how do you make it a big match feel? Because we love using the, we we love using that term big match feel in TNA. How does it become right. a big match feel when we have the same match back to back within yeah. a week or within a two week span? So I, I guess even, that's where we lost the steam with Masha in that front. I, I even think in that same vein. Uh, when they had Alan Angels win the Ultimate X, because that's what it was, Ultimate X, that he won the. Mm-hmm. And um, instead of, hey, we're gonna give him a little more momentum. Let's get him some wins. They he like he they mm-hmm. threw him right into the title match, which told us, hey, it, this was just a gimmick match for Impact One Thousand. We gotta, you know, we did it. Now let's get the title shot out of the way so we can move on to what we really want to do. Right. And uh, I, I'm just like, man, they could have really like. Space it out, build yeah, momentum. Just, yeah, have him get into the match. Because that's how I, mean, I, t- I say this all the time. That's how I grew up as a kid, and I understand watching wrestling in the '80s and '90s is very different than now. But mm-hmm. um, the the example I've used a lot on my podcast is that the very first episode of Monday Night Raw, the main event was like The Undertaker versus Damian Demento, and I didn't yeah. know Damian Demento was a jobber until he lost to The Undertaker, because right. I just see him. Granted, there were a lot of squash matches because that's what it was back then, but he right. had won so many matches up to that point that the match comes and you're like, man, I, I legitimately don't know who's going to win because both these guys always win. Yeah. Um, you know, NXT did that years ago with Baron Corbin and um, Bull Dempsey. I don't even know if that, that was his NXT name or new. Yeah, Bull yeah. Dempsey or whatever. They did the same story where these guys were just destroying people and then it got to, you know, it came to a head, a head and it's just, I, I don't know. I, I just, um, I just don't like seeing people lose so quickly yeah. or give up, you know, or, um, uh, have a title, you know, they're the number one contender then they wrestle the next week. And it's just, I just want to see some sort of build to, to, to wait for it a little bit. Um, yeah, and then I, I say that with the knockouts tag titles, I talk about that at least once every other week that they had, Masha and Kelly wrestle everybody in one match, and then they won, and it's like, oh shit, what the hell do the we do now? To wrestle. And, exactly. and now they're ice cold. The knockouts title, I think they, I think they went ahead on that one. The knockouts title, having a tag title, would make sense if you have a, if you have a big knockouts roster. How many knockouts do we have in TNA? What, I, I think we have more than we team? realize. I think I think the roster is a little bigger than we think it is. Okay, but, but there's just not enough. Remember, at one point when we knew that belts were coming, everyone was paired up. Yeah, and then I think COVID threw that off a little, but then yeah. that's never happened since. It's always like there's the team champions, and then they'll they'll pair up two girls, and that's the feud. And that's and a feud, yeah. When that's over, okay, who who can we pair up now? Like it's it's yeah, it's been yeah. not good. <laughs> yeah, it's um I don't know. I mean the, the the tag titles for me is hit or miss. I just felt like, you know, I felt like TNA hasn't really done a good job with the with the knockouts title with the knockouts tag titles to a degree. I, I guess it all boils down to just the storyline perspective of it. And, you know, it's pretty much everywhere, not just in the knockouts, not just for the knockouts tag titles, but, you know, everywhere, every facet of the of the company when it comes to those titles. 
I felt like there really, there really isn't a lot of build. There really isn't a lot of blood feuds going into those going into those championship matches that makes it feel real, makes it feel legit. Everything is all passive. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's I all think, passive. Yeah, I really felt like in 2023 and, and towards the end of 2022, it became a yeah. – maybe it's no much not the knockouts, but – it became more about like let's put on these like really good matches, regardless mm-hmm. of the story, you know. And I and it's I have no like, problem with good matches. Right. I'm a big proponent of it, but if you're going to do that, at least apply more balance when you're doing stuff like that. If you're going to put in a good match, let it be good, but also let there be a storyline behind it. You know, right. historically, we've always we've always had good storylines, but shitty matches and poor execution at the end. Yeah. Now <laughs> we're having good matches, but there's no storyline to to make up for those good matches. And at the end of the day, what happens? A shitty execution. Because you look at a good match, and they'll be like, "Oh my god, that match was good," but no one is talking about. Every, all they are talking about is just that match, the match being good. But everyone looks back at it. No one's going to remember what that feud look, what that feud looked like, what the storyline behind it looked like, mm-hmm. because there's just no balance. There's no substance to that. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. I mean, so let's take for instance at Hard to Kill, we're getting Chris Sabin by Kingo and um, Kushida. Now we know that's going to be a really fun match, but oh, yeah. does anyone care who wins? I mean, is there an emotional investment where someone's like, man, I really want this person to win? Like, we just know we're going to get a good match, but we're lacking a complete emotional investment of of uh, yeah. we want this person to win, we want this person to lose because they're just randomly wrestling. Right. I you mean, know? they're going to look at it and be like, yeah, that was a good match. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? I mean, I love, a, I love a good match. I mean, I'm not going to yeah. lie to you. I love a really good match. But, you know, Everyone would just see that and be like, yeah, that was a good match, but that's it. You know, that's just yeah. it. I mean, where's the storyline? Where's the storyline? Where's the feud? You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. we all, I understand why TNA is doing this because right. really they're trying to put seat, they're trying to put butts in seat that hard to kill. So they're mm-hmm. trying as much as they can to just throw matches together, which is, I, I get it, you know, I get it to a degree. But I feel like, and I said the same thing for Bound for Glory as well. I felt like some more investments could have been made towards some of those cards, towards the Bound for Glory card. Um, Storylines could have been made on that Bound for Glory card. At least we could have seen something more tangible between Trinity and Mickey James or Alex Shelley and Josh. I mean, Alex Shelley and Josh did have, did have an okay storyline, but it wasn't yeah, they- anything newsworthy. They, they did better with it than I thought they were going to. I yeah. was like, oh, man, we're going to get these boring promos back and forth. You know, exactly. but they, they added a little edge to Alex Shelley. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it worked. Alex out. Shelley's really good. Alex Shelley's really good. Yeah. yeah. Alex Shelley was operating more as a tweener leading into the match. Yeah. So it was, it was a good, it was actually good. It was actually mm-hmm. good. But after that, there was really nothing else. There was just yeah. nothing else. Everything was just there. Mm-hmm. And no. I actually was just thinking with the X Division match, I think this is the first time, or at least first time in a long time, that we're having a match that's like an, an American wrestler, um, but more importantly, like a Japanese wrestler and a Mexican wrestler. Like we're Mexican actually, wrestler, yeah. I mean, that's that's actually really different, you know. I don't that's think they're really marketing dope. it as such. You know, they're not yeah. presenting it like, hey, this we're you've never seen a match like this, you know, which is that's true. It, but, but uh, I mean, it's going to be yeah. very unique. And I actually think Kushida is going to win. Um, but then yeah. if he does, and I'm pretty sure he is, uh, then you got a guy who doesn't speak English and he's going to be the champion. You know, maybe Chris Saban wins. I don't know. But, but um, there's a 33% chance that right. you know, Steiner math that the champion does not speak English after this match. Right. <laughs> I'd say a 66. Yeah, 66 percent. Yeah. yeah, did the math the wrong yeah. way. But. 
So it, it yeah. just kind of tells me again, maybe 2024 is going to be more about, you know, having really good matches, but it, yeah, the, the story is lacking. I, I thought bound for glory, even though it was a really good show, I was just like, man, mm-hmm. I don't care about very many of these matches. Cause it's just, yeah. It, it seems <sighs> like rebellion and slam anniversary are the two that we get some kind of stories and then hard to kill yeah. and bound for glory is like, but just, have matches. It's like, you know, it's <laughs> like and Impact does this all the time. We're at the beginning of the year. They're trying to figure out what they're trying to do, heading into Hard to Kill. And then, you know, typically those matches, even though I thought Hard to Kill 2022 was just really good. But, yeah, you know, at the same time, they're just still trying to figure out what they're doing heading into the year. So Hard to Kill is almost like they put in good matches in there throw throw good wrestlers put in a good put in good matches in there but there's just no storyline to it and then once they get that out of the way heading into rebellion is where they put more investment in storylines as well as slam anniversary then after that there's always that closure piece heading into bound there's always that conclusion heading into bound for glory where things are just dying down yeah i don't know why they do that i for 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 the you know I just don't know why they do that. I just wish they make these investments all year round. Right. I don't know why they feel everything has to have an off season. It doesn't yeah, have because, to be that. Uh, you know, WWE and uh, AEW don't do that. You know, um, and and these are live shows, right? They literally and, and, they're on the move 52, 52 weeks a year, right? So this exact time that Impact usually punches out is when. Mm-hmm. WWE's like, hey, let's build a Royal Rumble. Exactly. You know, so that they end the they end the year strong where impact dies off. And it, you know, it could be a logistic thing, financial thing. I mean, who we don't we don't really know, but yeah, they definitely think that there, hey, there needs to be an off season. But yeah. and I saw someone on Twitter the other day. Well, impact actually gives their wrestlers a break. I'm like, they wrestle three days a month. <laughs> you know, like I mean, let's yeah, be I mean, real here. I, I saw that almost choked, man. That was just so funny, man. I was like, these people actually realize that Impact wrestlers have like an extended vacation the rest of the month after a taping. Yeah. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> so I, I guess we'll yeah. never know exactly, but but it's every yeah. year. They do it every year. And it's, it's yeah, it's just weird because it's like you get Bound for Glory and then you're thinking, well, there's got to be some stories after Bound for Glory. It's their biggest show right. of the year, and then it just, right. you know, nothing. Um, yeah. Let me let me ask you um, regarding these production upgrades rumored, and do you think, like in your gut, do you think that the show is going to look very different, or is it going to be the same dark, you know, camera? the ring entrance, you know, showing the entrance with just some different color ropes. I mean, like in your gut, do you think that they're, they have finally said, yo, this show's got to look better because I always say you don't have NXT's money, but you have to look closer to, to NXT than you do to MLW. Right. You, you know exactly. what I mean? Um, exactly. Even NWA has a pretty good uh, production quality at the moment. Yeah. You know, so but like in your gut, what do you think is going to happen? I think some adjustments will be made. I, that I that I'll be I'll be so shocked. Like I will be so shocked if nothing if nothing changes, because you literally took out months out of your fall schedule, no tapings. You had to discontinue Impact Plus to launch a new um TNA to Plus. launch a new TNA Plus app. So all that money, all that investment, come on. Yeah, <laughs> something has to change. So, yeah. you know, I'm I'm pessimistic about certain things about TNA, but I'm pretty optimistic about the production quality coming out of this promotion heading into the new year. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, that's um, how I feel too. I was like, they have to know yeah. that this is... Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. can't continue how they were. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm I'm pretty optimistic. I'll be yeah. really shocked. I'll be really right. shocked if nothing changes. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, I'm telling you, if that first episode hits and it's we own the night and all, I, I would, I would fall backwards I, in my chair. I'm like, I think I'll that- destroy my. I'm, I'm literally going to throw a remote at my TV. Like I'll lose my shit. Like I'll go on a rant on BFI. 
I don't care. Yeah. I'm ranting yeah. on everyone. Yeah. Cause, yeah, because this is their last opportunity yeah. to do this. This so is it. it. Like, this is it. You know, and you know, I didn't make the rules. You guys went out there and said you wanted to rebrand. So at least let I'm expecting changes to happen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Yeah, it's it's their, it's their last chance. So it's it's mm-hmm. you have to improve in every every area. And exactly. I had said, and, and people I think twisted my words a little bit, but I said under the impact banner, you know, the last several years under Anthem, I'll say the show has been the best over that it's been in a while, but mm-hmm. You know, we got the the worst ring announcing in the history of the company. We got the worst <laughs> play by play in the history of the company. And I'm not talking about right. Tom. I'm talking about the tail end of Josh Matthews, the whole the whole run of freaking Matt Stryker. Um, yeah. We've got the worst production quality ever in the history of the company. Like, there's no doubt about this. You know, the, so there are so many areas where, you know, the, the digital media championship is only second to the freaking. Um, Grand Championship is like one of the worst ideas they ever had for a title. So there's so many areas where it's like, yo, under Anthem, we got bottom lows, absolute lows in so many categories. Absolute lows, like dirt poor. Right. The digital media champion, the digital media title. But when I say all these things, it does not mean, oh, well, this has been the worst the show. Because no, it's actually yeah. the wrestling, the actual matches. You're talking some of the best ever, uh, and yeah. even the overall quality of the show. If we're just making all things relative, have been really good. But my whole point of saying that is like, I mean, sky's the limit. You know, like, you know, we've had the worst theme songs. That's what I, another thing I said as far as wrestler theme songs, worst <laughs> in the history yeah. of the company. Um, yeah, you know, so. Yeah, sky's the limit. I mean, there's so many areas where you can be like, yo, we can fix this. Boom, boom, boom. And it could just yeah. feel like a completely new company. It's the small things that we need to fix because those small things compound yes. and it becomes big things. So the little things is what needs to be tweaked up. Having titles that make no sense are those little things that need to be tweaked up. The production are those little things that need to be tweaked up. Because, listen, sometimes I don't like watching Impact. I'm not a really I'm lately I haven't been a consistent I'm not lately I've not been a consistent viewer of impact just because their their um their production their presentation just the, the thing kills me man yeah I'm really selective on how I view impact and I guess it's one of the good things that one of the good things that I felt like they've done was putting their stuff on YouTube insiders because what they've done is that they break down their matches into different segments. So I'm mm-hmm. able to like cherry pick and pick a match of my choosing that I want to watch that I haven't to watch the entire show and lose my shit. So right. yeah. I rather cherry pick. Yeah. Pick a pick a match that I think that's gonna do well and watch it and just get it over with. But there it's was... one of those no sorry, sorry. Where... Yeah, it's one of those small things. They have a lot of small things that they need to straighten out. Yeah. So it won't compound and become a much bigger issue. Because a lot of this, this, this whole, this, the last couple of years, the presentation, the titles, the no storylines, the not building momentum for talents heading into pay per views, all that has to change heading yeah. into this rebrand. We can't have a repeat of all this. Yeah. And, um, yeah. You know, I, I'm a notorious nitpicker to a lot of people. Um, right. But and that's fair, man. But the thing is, the small details add up as with the point that you're saying. It's yeah. it's not it's not that, oh, this week I just feel like talking about uh, the turnbuckles just to fucking exactly. complain about something. It, it's because every little aspect does yeah. snowball into like a, a, a bigger overall issue. So yeah. um, I was I was going to say there was one point they probably did it for about a half a year straight where they played we own the night during every commercial, like going into and out of commercials in the background of all the promos. Right. It was, I, I mean, I was just speechless. I said, who thinks this is a good idea? Who, what, who, who is watching this? I just, do they not watch their own programs and hear how annoying this is? You know, so, um, but they improved those things. Like they, th- those, they did make some of those 
little changes over time. But there was my point was yeah. there was just a period where I was like, I cannot watch this show. Like I was right. really, really struggling. Um, yeah. Because this stuff, every episode was it was the same thing every every episode, and I'm just like, God, I can't. This is driving right. me crazy. You know, so um, I don't expect fireworks or anything crazy like that. I think that would be very much out of their budget to do. But yeah, I, I again have to believe it's going to look really, really different. And uh, I mean, even up to this last Impact Plus show, and I don't even remember what it was. The uh, uh, what do they call the one at the end of the year. Um, final resolution. Final resolution. Yeah, final like resolution. it was still yeah. audio issues, and with that one, wasn't the audio issues of like the mic cutting out, but the yeah. audio quality of the show was was low, and a, a lot of people didn't really probably didn't realize that. But I had just watched an episode of Impact before I watched Final Resolution, right. and you hear this right. huge drop off in audio quality. Yeah, you know. So we're talking this this up to the very last show, you know. So it just has to improve. Like uh, when they first started doing the Twitch shows, I remember so many people were watching them and they were so, the quality was so bad that it got to the point where there was 500 people watching live. <laughs> you know, like, I think there was, there was an, there was an impact event where Josh Matthews was literally recording the, recording the event from his phone. The funny thing Twitch. is I didn't watch that one. So I saw that I'm familiar with, what everyone was saying, but I, I don't. Yeah. yeah, this was this was actually the Twitch event before Bound for Glory 2019. Okay. The one, I feel like I, I kind of want to look it, it up. I, I think was the event where um, they had a bunch of indie shows. They brought a, they brought a bunch of indie shows together um, for an event. This okay. was, a, I believe, it was the event before Bound for Glory 2019. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah, but man, I Josh was literally recording from his phone the entire time. I was like, "What the hell is this?" I mean, is this what we do? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Like, and that yeah. was always my point. If you're gonna do it, like, do it. You know? Uh, yeah. Like, like the other day, I I commended my son for doing his own laundry without me telling him. Um, <laughs> and then I look, and the laundry basket was half full, and half of his clothes were on the floor still. And I said, I told him, I was like, if you're going to do laundry, do laundry. Like, don't mm -hmm. just appease, appease me. Like, right. actually make sure all your clothes are clean, you know? So it, it's, I, I say that because they do these things and they, but they don't go hundred percent in, um, exactly. you know, just the, even the impact rebrand when they became impact, they just never went all in on it. Even to the last day, like they still wanted to remind us that. AJ that Styles. They were CNA, that AJ Styles, Abyss. Yeah. yeah. Mm -mm. You know, they just, now they probably really are, but um, <laughs> hopefully I mean, not. But uh, yeah, they just, they just never went all in. And that's all I want this time to just go all in this time and yeah. do it. Cause it's your last time. It is the only, it might be the only opportunity left for a wrestling company to establish themselves as the alternative. Yeah. Because AEW has completely shit the bed on that, and now it's it's just a golden opportunity to be the alternative. Um, I was telling someone, I told a couple of people this the other day, you know, because I like watching the NWA. But what I like about the NWA is they only care about what the NWA is doing. You know, I, not that I wanted to see Tyrus as a world champion, but they didn't give a. Sh they were just like, Yo, I'm going to put the title who I want to put it on. I don't care if. Um, you know, or, or I'm going to give this certain person some time on a TV match. You know, they, they take chances and they don't really care. And I, I think that Impact, much like AEW, too concerned about what WWE is doing and what the WWE audience would want from them. Or, but but know. don't you think don't you think that's actually a problem though? Because and let me let me tell you this. So for a company like TNA, if we're going to apply that logic, maybe apply if we're going to apply that logic, like what NWA is doing, like not giving a damn about putting the title on Tyrus. Uh -huh. I'm sure they I'm sure they feel the same way. I'm sure TNA feels the same way in a lot of things. I'm sure they're pretty consistent with that because you have Tommy Dreamer running around with a digital media champion with a digital media title. 
where I'm pretty sure roughly 80 to 90% of TNA fans cannot stand the idea of Dreamer running around with it, with the with the digital media title. You get what I mean? Yeah. I, f- I feel like TN- I feel like Impact is pretty consistent with not giving a damn about what people think. And to me, I feel that's actually a problem. That's to their detriment. Because here's the thing. Impact wants to go out there and bring in the CM Punks and the Will Ospreys and the Mercedes Monets of the world. If you're going to do that, then that comes with that comes with that that comes with adapting to certain things. You have mm-hmm. to be like WWE and AEW. You have to cater to their fan base if you're trying to bring in, if you're trying to bring them in. You can do your own thing, but your own thing sucks. Dreamer sucks. Tyra yeah. sucks. So that's where the issue is. But Dreamer like, is connected to WWE, so they're like, "Hey, he's he was popular then. People want to see him." Right, but at the same time, nobody likes Dreamer. That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> the problem is that yeah. no one likes Dreamer. <laughs> that's the thing. Like li- literally, no one likes Dreamer. Not not a lot of TNA fans like Dreamer. Hell, even I mean, have you gone on Twitter? Have you have you seen like even like TNA? Um, TNA pages on Twitter don't like Dreamer at all. They just don't. They want the title off him. That's the problem. Like you know, I, I I don't know what the I don't know what the big deal is with 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 TNA and Dreamer. I I think they look at how everybody feel. I think they look at what everybody feels about Dreamer, and they're like, you know what? Since people don't like him, let's just put let's just keep the title on him just to piss people off. Because I'm guessing that's what they're trying to do, just to piss us off. Because it makes no sense. What what I'm understanding mm-hmm. from what someone told me within a company one time is that his yeah. number, his YouTube numbers are really high. So I think they believe that that translates to eyeballs. Um, that is such a, that to, if that's the case, and that's sort of short sighted way of thinking. That is so short term that it makes yeah. no sense at all. And the way the strategy I always take at is you got to mm-hmm. look at the numbers in the middle. And exactly. those are your your viewers um, when you're talking about a, a, your YouTube content. Because right. Tommy Dreamer, by nature of his connection to WWE, and I guess ECW yeah. to an extent, he is going to have more views than Josh Alexander is. But that doesn't mean people want to see him. He's just more popular exactly. uh, in, in the overall wrestling, the history of wrestling. So he's yeah. going to have more views. That just, But that doesn't mean that that's what people want to see on TV. Exactly. So I always say... You know, whatever you see in the middle is what people have the most interest in. Um, Mm -hmm. And the stuff that's there down at the bottom, you know, you got to make better. But uh, just just because something, I mean, the dumbest shit in the world goes viral, right? It doesn't mean it's like good necessarily. Sometimes shit goes viral for being bad, you know. So um, I think they they look at their numbers wrong. It's much like when WWE, uh, one day when McMahon said, oh, my God, we got all these people in India. So let's put the title yeah. on, on gender. But I mean, India, was there 3 billion people in there? I mean, of course, right. uh, you're going to have b- higher numbers there than you are some of these other countries I watch. It doesn't mean, oh, if we cater to this market. country now, then the, this exactly. business is going to go through the roof. Like, you have to operate in the middle. Um, you know, so I, yeah. is it true they're taking the digital media championship into the TNA era? Because someone told me that. Um, it's yeah, it's, it's, gone, it's, it's literally on the countdown to hard to kill pay per view. Yeah, but like, that doesn't necessarily it, mean like, like say Crazy Steve wins it, he may take a hammer to it the next episode. And I, 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 I hope just, he does. I hope he does. I, I, I hope he pulls a rhino and just throws that shit in the trash and burns that shit alive or something. Burns yeah. that shit up. Yeah, you know, like that title. They need to get rid of that title. Like it makes no sense, man. I don't even have think, a problem with. I'm sorry. No, I think if they're gonna, if they want an extra title, get a title that makes sense. Yeah, I always felt like they should have like a global title because TNA loves their partners. They love their partnerships. They want to work with everybody. So you're working with New Japan. You're working in Mexico with AAA. Why don't you? have like a TNA global title and defend that title overseas. 
Yeah. Hell, give that title to a New Japan star because when they're when they're wearing that title, they're repping TNA. It mm-hmm. brings a lot of eyeballs to the promotion. I don't know what the digital media title. It's a, it's a really bad name. The, the, the that name makes no sense. That's really and bad. I, there's been no benefit. It has not benefited anybody, and nobody has benefited that title either since it came into play. Yeah, what I was gonna say was that I don't even have a problem with the actual booking of the title. Aside from yeah. Dreamer, it's just when they came out, they they had as promises of this is gonna be cutting edge and different, and we're gonna do this and this, and they didn't do anything, any of those things Nothing. with the title. Exactly. We didn't get Twitter and Facebook exclusive matches and all that. Like it just. Um, it's just a name, a title by name. And yeah. I like what you say about some kind of global championship because you can make it at the work, the workhorse title to where exactly Kashida could win it, Vikingo could win it, someone who's not part of the company could win it, and we wouldn't feel like it was out of the out of the norm. You know, like hey, mm-hmm. sometimes from TNA, someone from TNA have it, sometimes someone from AAA has it. Um, cool. Exactly. I'm glad they have it because that means we're gonna see them on our show now. Like it, if they made it for that specific title. Um, mm-hmm. it could work, you know, uh, Jarrett, yeah. Jeff Jarrett once had this vision with global force wrestling that was ahead of its time. Yeah. Um, but because, because Jeff W became a joke and never got off the ground, it never came yeah. to fruition, but he, he, he well in advance had a vision for, um, Jeff w. you know, combining people from all over the world. Um, right. You know, and now it's kind of a little more normal, um, to see, but, right. but yeah, the title is just, it's just bad wrestlers don't care the fans don't care and it's you know i I remember being really excited when they said hey we're announcing a new title i'm like okay cool because half the roster's fighting for nothing um but it's been a yeah at first they try to make it a uh, intergender title for a little bit you know and jordan grace (laughs) yeah so yeah i mean they completely gave up on it so um Yeah. yeah i know he's on a countdown but hopefully steve wins it and then they throw it in the trash or something you know, yeah, I just, just I pull, a, pull a rhino and just burn that title, man. I cannot do imagine it dramatically. Gonna, right. I just can't imagine yeah. them spending thirty thousand dollars on a brand new championship, and it's the TNA Digital Media Championship. I mean, it's their one opportunity to to, to make up for this. <laughs> yeah. Yep, uh, they, I agree. They, they might even bring back the King of the Mountain. Who knows? I mean, <laughs> they they might. Which hopefully they don't, but. Oh God! They better don't. Might as well yeah. keep the digital media channel. <laughs> they bring yeah, back might the as grand well championship. Just it, yeah, yeah. I actually like the term "the grand championship." I thought that was a dope term. I, I liked the yeah. belt itself. I just didn't like how it was being booked and defended on yeah. TNA. Yeah, the title was nice. I just did not I, like how it was booked. I thought the initial tournament was really, really good for it. Yeah, I was, I was into it. Um, but it was just once Aaron Rex was the initial champion where he should not have been. Right. You know, um, I don't think he was supposed to win it. I think uh, Drew was supposed to, but then he got hurt. Um, yeah. But that was an example of, hey, this guy was in WWE. Let's try to capitalize it. And his style of wrestling didn't fit wh- where they were trying to go with that title. Yeah. You know, and it just, just didn't work. It didn't work, yeah. <laughs> But um, yeah, something. Yeah, it's a, it's a long put that on a long list of titles that just didn't make any sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about here, we'll wrap it up. Um, I do think as far as, you know, we talked a lot about them trying to sign CM Punk and and these dudes. Yeah. I really think even though I brought up already, like I would sign these guys from NXT personally. Um, right. But I really think there's going to be a golden opportunity this year for like the mid card of AEW, because um, I think a lot of these people are going to get be getting released from their contracts. The ones who were like the AEW originals, and you know, yeah, there's a certain I I don't see, I only see WWE picking up the Jade Cargills and the you know the like the real stars, but yeah, there's going to be like that the middle card there for a bit that is going to be big in the name of, in the compared to impact, you yeah. know, that I think that you could, you know, bring in. Um, 2024. 
What's that? Sorry. No, sorry. Go on. No, I said, do you think that that is a possibility now? Because Tony's going to trim this roster down at some point, and and he just seems to be signing WWE people now. So, and he's not he's not re-signing right. the you know the people that lay the foundation for the company. Right. And I think, you know, I think Impact has a good opportunity to like really pluck those people and to be even to be choosy too. You yeah. know, if, you know, not just because sometimes they sign people out of like it was it, only, it comes across like out of desperation. Um, yeah. You know, like the Heath signing and shit like that. Um but I, I don't know. I, I can just see some fresh faces kind of following uh Frankie Kazarian's lead a little bit. Yeah. You know. I think what we're gonna witness in twenty twenty four, and I would say the next six months of twenty twenty four. It's actually going to be an interesting time for wrestling as a whole because that's when a lot of these contracts are a lot of these contracts are coming up, especially with AEW. AEW has a ton of contracts coming up, yeah. and AEW has 146 people under contract in their roster. 146. Wow. Half of them aren't being used, and okay. Even if they are used, they're not used properly. Yeah. So I'm sure they're gonna want to see what's out there. You know what I mean? So but a I lot think of these Impact, contracts are coming up. But I think Impact's gonna be the landing landing spot because exactly. I, I just think we're in a place right now where, like WWE is so hot right now, like they don't have right. to make desperation signings. Like they they don't have they they have they're probably gonna have no use for a lot of the mid card of AEW. Um, yeah. You know, but one here's or two might pop up on NXT, but uh-huh. But here's the thing, though. You know, AEW is also in that kind of position, but WWE is also in that kind of position as well. Because right now, WWE is also entering into contract season where they're trying to resign some of their top stars. But another thing we're also not... Uh, another thing a lot of us aren't really putting into perspective as well that WWE has a very deep middle um they have very deep um talent that's just that's languishing in the middle section meaning yeah. that you know they're not really main they're not really their main stars but they're not really like they're not really like they're like they're low stars or anything they're just languishing in the middle mm-hmm. when those contracts come up when those contracts come up like the Sheamus's of the world the very long-term stars that are there, when their contracts come up, I'm sure they're going to ask for more money and TKO is probably going to be like, um, no, because yeah. what benefits, what benefit are you going to provide to the organization to warrant a contract increase? So we're probably going to see a lot of releases coming up yeah, within the next couple of months from the WWE. And also they have an NXT roster that's pretty much ready to go at any moment into the main roster. They can be at NXT forever. They're going to make that jump. So once they make that jump, a lot of those talents, a lot of the the main roster talents out there, especially the ones that are not, especially the ones that are, you know, that are languishing within the middle, within the lower tier of the booking spectrum, they're either going to, they're either going to sign new contracts or they're going to make that jump. But a lot of people are going to be leaving soon. So, Mm -hmm. you know, the next six months heading into 2024 is pretty much interesting. I would even say the same thing about TNA because we're going to bring in more talents. But guess what? We're bringing in more talents. Someone got to (laughs) go. Someone has to go. And you get what I mean? I mean, we're we're trying to bring in CM. We're trying to bring in CM Punk and the Will Ospreys. We're trying to bring in a big signing. But guess what? While we're trying to bring in those signings, I'm sure you noticed how we got rid of some talents leading up into the process. The Kenny Kings, the Sammy Callihans, um, the Heats, a lot of them, the Giannis, a lot of them are leaving if they've not left. So there's going to be a lot of restructuring from all three parties, regardless, at the end of the day. And New Japan, too. I mean, you've heard the Okada rumors as well. So there's, you know, the, the next six months, Starting in starting next month, leading into July, is pretty. It's going to be an interesting time. 
Yeah, and the the cat was let out the bag that they <laughs> offered huge, huge money deals to um, Punk and Osprey. Right. Um, and to my knowledge, I could be wrong, um, but it was a fairly reliable source. I, I believe the Good Brothers were. I was told about twenty five, a uh, quarter of a million each. And half a million in total. That's that's what I understand. But I know that um, talking to some, you know, actually spoke to some wrestlers about this. That once that cat was kind of out of the bag, and this kind of happened with Killer Cross too. Once they realized what some of the people were making, they said, mm-hmm. "Whoa! If you have that kind of money, why am I making this? Exactly. Why am I getting four hundred for the weekend? You know what I'm saying? And I, and, um, I, I I go back to the previous point that I made about CM Punk. Because what's going to happen is that, yeah, you have the money to pay CM Punk, but I don't think a lot of them are factoring down the downstream effects that it's potentially going to cause when these contracts come up. Because you're potentially going to have a bigger problem when those contracts are up. If you're paying CM Punk that kind of money, hell, if you're paying Will Ospreay, you're, you're, I mean, they said they were going to pay Will Ospreay $1 million. Will Ospreay is good, but he ain't that big, man. <laughs> He's not that big. Yeah. And you're paying him one million. So when Moose's contract comes up, I'm Moose will be like, hey, it's kind of one that money as well. If you're paying Osprey one million, hey, let me just get half of that. Come on, man. Yeah. Well, I know Moose Moose is not making half of half of that, by the way. But you know, he's gonna ask for half of that. Yeah, I would. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. I would. But mm-hmm. come on. Yeah. So, you know, I that's why I I want to think, I want to believe that they thought about this. I want to believe that they thought about this, and if 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 they did think about this, then I don't think they really really made. I don't think they made a move for CM Punk. That's just my belief because yeah, I yeah. think they're yeah. I I personally think that they're smarter than that. I think it's a it's a good it's a good PR stunt. I respect that, but yeah. come on, man. one million to Osprey? Nah, I didn't. I I don't buy it for a second. Yeah, I, I it, it, it maybe might have been PR stunts. Uh, not, yeah. I don't know if PR stunt is the right word, but it's probably possible they knew they weren't getting these guys, but at least in the the, the perception, if the perception can be we had a shot, right? you know, it gives the fans some hope. Right. You know, I've seen sports franchises do it. Some of the, um, you know, the um, lower tier, uh, smaller market teams, like, hey, we're going to make this big offer to someone you know, and they probably knew they weren't going to take it, but they said, "Hey, you know, right. at least we are given the impression that we're making the attempt." Yeah, you know? and that seems to excite the fans. <laughs> right. Yeah, but I, I would just love to see them um, maybe take care of the people at the bottom a little bit better, uh, maybe the people in the middle a little bit better, and and now you're giving people a reason to want to come there. You know, like someone out of the Indies. You know. Like I know, I know that at one point to work on AEW Dark was the same pay as working like two days for Impact. <laughs> if you're doing, if you're, you know what I'm saying. Um, so it's kind of like, why do I? What is the point of me signing here if that's what they're going to give me? You know what I mean? When I can actually go over here and mm-hmm. maybe I'm a jobber, but I'm still making more. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I so. mean, the rumor, the rumor, the rumor that I heard. Was that, um, and I really don't want to say any names, but the rumor I heard was the average, and it makes sense. The average pay scale in Impact was what, 35, 40,000 a year? 35, 40,000 a year. So, how is that? If, if you're paying talents that kind of money, why would you be audacious enough to offer Osprey 1 million? I mean, I'm, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I want things to make sense here. Like right. I'm trying to add some perspective here. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, but I, you know, yeah. when you say that, I want to make it clear to people: Impact has never claimed to to be a to provide a what is the term I'm looking for? Salary. Uh, yeah, well, not salary, but um, they never claim to be a full time wrestling company. They never um, right claim to to provide someone uh it's like living fee or living I, i'm trying to living wage that's what i was trying to living, yeah. they, they never claim hey we're a company that provides a living wage but but if you give um a nice base of people to work off you know 
R- mm-hmm. Rather than, um, like, let's just say you're paying someone their indie fee. Well, you're making less to work for Impact because you're not selling merch when you get to the show. You know, maybe you're getting a little more uh, you know, notoriety. You're on TV or whatever, but yeah, um, I don't think they ever claim to pay a living wage. But but if I mean, if I were me and I was a part time wrestler and I'm like, hey, you're guaranteeing me 40k. Okay, cool. I'll go make the rest of the money somewhere else. But right. You know, I think um, I, I think you got to offer a little more guaranteed money if you really want yeah. some people, um, some up and comers to take you seriously. Yeah. You know, but but I do think if the pay the pay gap, gap excuse me the pay gap is that big, it, it's I I would have to think that it causes issues. You know, like yeah. You know, and and the people who make the big you know, who do make the salaries are going to win all the matches, you know? So I just think yep. they have to find a way to close the gap a little. I agree. But who knows? I agree. But I think that'll do it for us. We talked almost an hour and a half here, so it's good. Oh uh, yeah. I, I could keep going, but um, <laughs> can't talk forever <laughs> here. I can hear my dogs getting restless over here. So. Um, gotcha, man. But yeah. Uh, thanks for doing this. Don't go. I'm, I'm going to tell you who I think they're going to sign. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do an upload on it later, but I, I have okay. some ideas. So, uh, but yeah, okay. thanks for swinging by, my man. And um, for those of you still hanging out to the very end, thank you very much. And uh, talk to you soon. Peace. Peace. Mm-hmm.